Hello, my name is Clemen. My name is David. And my name is Nguyen. And this is our overview of absolutely everything in Newtonian mechanics, according to Mr. Jam. Let's take a look at the interactions that occur in Newtonian physics. The contact interaction is the first up, and it is responsible for the normal force, the friction force, and the force of drag. Second up, we have the elastic restoring interaction, and this is responsible for the spring force. Up next, we have the tension interaction, and this one causes the tension force. Finally, we have the gravitational interaction, and this one is responsible for, well, gravity, or gravitational force to be proper. Let's take a more in-depth look at each one of these specifically. Contact interactions occur whenever two bodies or objects are in contact with each other. A great example of this would be a car crash. The two objects collide and exert force on each other. Now, the first example of this is normal force. Normal force occurs whenever a force acts upon an object. That object will exert an equal and opposite force back to the direction they receive the force. Now, this applies to both humans and Jedi. Second up, we have friction. Now imagine you're cruising down the highway and you're coming to your exit and all of a sudden you see that the exit has a green light, which is great, so you just press on the gas pedal and go a bit faster. However, the light all of a sudden turns red and you have to brake, squeeze your brake pedals. And what happens is the tires exert friction on the road which slows down your car. Finally, we have drag. And drag is friction of bodies moving through fluids. Now the airplane is a great example because it pushes onto the air and the air pushes back in the form of drag. This also is what produces lift and keeps the airplane afloat. Alright, so next we have the, the elastic restoring interaction. The elastic restoring interaction leads to not tension, the spring force and most commonly people think about spring. Here we have a little demonstration of this spring force. We have a race between a tissue box and a, a whiteboard eraser. So we're compressing the spring to provide the spring force in order to push either the tissue box or the eraser. Here we're screwing up a few times, but obviously because the eraser has less mass, it wins. Brilliant. All right, so next we have the tension interaction. The tension interaction leads to a tension force. Here we have a wrecking ball. Gravity pulls this wrecking ball down while there's tension force in the rope that keeps the wrecking ball stable. You can imagine who that person is on the wrecking ball. So the tension force exists in tight ropes and strings. Most commonly this is demonstrated when you have tug of wars. Both hands provide force opposite of each other, but there's tension force in the rope that is parallel yet opposite to the force of the hands. And once tension for force becomes too great, the rope breaks. Our final interaction is the gravitational interaction, and this causes gravity. Gravity is the attraction between any two objects that have mass. They're both attracted towards each other, however, the less massive object is attracted more towards the more massive object. That's how we are attracted to the Earth, and the Earth is really not moving towards us. Now, another thing that is attracted to our planet is the Moon. The Moon should, by all loss, fall to the Earth. And the reason why it does not is because it also has a velocity perpendicular to the Earth, and since there is no friction in space, it moves around it. However, this does not apply for incoming meteors, so the dinosaur was not, were not as lucky as us. Okay, so there are four types of interactions that we covered in Newtonian mechanics. These four types of interactions lead to six forces, which leads to change in motion. There are three types of change in motion. The first is translations. The second is uh, ox, oscillations? No, 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 oscillations. Yeah, it's a difficult word. Lastly, they're rotations. So, rotations. 
Rotations are when the line of the net force does not pass through the center of mass. David here applies net force not through the center of mass, so it caused our friend George to spin. So next we have translations. Unlike rotations, translations is when the net force, the line of the net force, passes through the center of mass. Clem here translates a across our whiteboard. Lastly, we have oscillations. Oscillations is simply repeating motion. It could be repeating rotations or repeating translations. This pendulum is a great demonstration of oscillation. Physics is the study of the motion of systems. Now inside this box, we'll present our system. The first example will be a single body system, and this applies to the interaction of translation. Now, state variable for this is velocity. And the model we use is the net force model. As you can see, this is essentially us pushing an object within a system that is influenced by external forces. The second one is a multi-bodied system. Now, a multi-body system its key difference from a single body system is that it includes multiple bodies or objects inside of it and they translate energy between one another. The state variables are linear momentum and total mechanical energy and the agents of change are impulse and work. We also have models to represent this. For impulse, we have the impulse momentum model. And for work, we have the work mechanical energy model. And as you can see, this is essentially two objects translating energy between each other. Next we have single body systems when applied to rotation. Here in rotation, the state variable is torque for a single body system. torque, the agent of change is the net torque, and we use a net torque model to describe this. This giant wheel here is the spinning single body. So we have multi-body systems applied to rotation as well. In a multi-body system, is simply two or more objects interacting and rotating. The state variables here are angular impulse and angular momentum. We use the angular impulse and angular momentum model to describe these. As well as the work and mechanical energy model. Here's a system that is changing motion is oscillation. There's only single body system for oscillations, no multi-body system. And the state variable is linear velocity or angular velocity. And the model that describes the system is the elastic restoring model. And in this case, what keeps the pendulum moving is the restoring torque. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Signing off, Newman, David, and Clement.